What's up guys? Hope you guys are doing well. Today we're just going to do a quick unboxing and overview and then I'll get into the first impressions of the Razer the Muramasa by Tatsara. This is the full fully adjust first full <laughs> sorry, first fully adjustable razor by uh <clears throat> Any modern razor, really. Uh, apparently, a vintage razor was able to pull this off, but uh, just looking at the contents here. But uh, no modern razor. So it shows the gaps and the exposures in the different <clears throat> setting levels. So this is fully adjustable. As you see, as you go up in setting, the exposure kind of becomes more and more positive. So the blade protrudes out more. And then also the gap increases incrementally. Um, I actually do have a, I'll actually, I'll annotate it, uh, right about now. Uh, I have a side-by-side -side comparison with the Nadachi, the Massimune, and the, uh, <clears throat> Muramasa. So you can see that side-by-side, -side. so it's been about 10 seconds. I'll, I'll leave it on for that. <clears throat> so yeah, this is the Razor. It comes in a nice, cool cork. Uh, really love the design of this Razor. Actually, I already used this once, and I'm absolutely in love with it so far. So it has like a little key that you could use to take it apart. Really cool Japanese theme as usual. But I'll show you how to load the razor. <clears throat> it's quite a genius design actually. 105 grams approximately. I was kind of worried this would be too heavy for my liking. As you guys know, I tend to prefer lighter razors. But if it's well balanced like this one is, we got a winner. So as you notice, the, the grooves a little bit deeper. This is blasted. I'm not sure if it's sandblasted or beat blasted. I honestly forgot, <clears throat> but it is blasted. Very smooth finish. So let's take it apart. Oh yeah, let's show you the settings. Here we go. So yeah, uh, turning this dial, as you guys know, it can be loose on some razors, <clears throat> like the Tega. Very loose where I would mid-shave, change it by accident, no go. Not a problem on this razor. I can try to push it with one hand and it's, not really going anywhere. So not a problem with this, not a problem with the Rex. But as you can see, that's the number two. It's it's a lot easier to see in person, but it's for some reason a little bit harder to see here. So if we focus on the base plates, you'll see that it kind of goes inward and it goes outward. So this would obviously make it more aggressive on setting five. <clears throat> so yeah, really simple. Very smooth. So what I really wanted to show, <clears throat> what makes this so balanced is you have the mechanism in the head here. This adds weight to the razor. I thought this would be a very top heavy razor, but the way they design the handle is this part is hollow, not much weight going on here, and then more weight towards the bottom. So once it's fully assembled, it's like perfectly balanced. And to me, that's what makes it special in terms of its weight distribution and design. Um, yeah, so I'm assuming the key goes in here. I haven't tried it, but that's it. We're going to load a blade. What blade do we got here? We're going to use a pole silver, uh, Wizomet, whatever you want to call it. A lot of you guys love this blade, I guess, because it wasn't obtainable at one point. So <laughs> we'll use it. <clears throat> so, yeah. What I love, no blade tabs like the old one. Uh, I'll get more into the shaving experience when I do the actual shave, but... Assembling it is super easy, really that simple. So you got the blade there, pretty awesome. Let's see. Yeah, let me show you a side. There you go. I actually don't own the Ambassador anymore. I do have the Rex Envoy on hand. I should have put a blade in here, but you could see the way it's torqued because the Ambassador is the same head geometry. Um, you can see the blade is way more torqued on on this, and then here they kind of just change the gap up and down, and then here um, by making the base plate go inwards and outwards, it uh, changes the exposure and the gap at the same time. Absolutely lovely razor so far. But yeah, that's it for the unboxing and overview, and we'll get into the actual shave. All right. That's good, guys. We are back. So, uh, what, it's been like a 10-day hiatus? It's not that bad. Um, hope you guys have been great. We got a real exciting shave for y'all. Um, I thought I'd go out with a bang here if you read the title. <laughs> so we got the Muramasa. I did a quick overview. Just gonna load the blade for you guys so you guys can see it in real time. Um, but yeah, I'm real excited about uh the gear I'm gonna be using today. So this is 
kind of a first impression is not really. Um, I used the same, pretty much the same setup last night. Uh, just way too tired to film. So we loaded a Gillette NASA on its second use. That's what I used the first time. And I'll uh, go into my experience of my first shave. And this will be my second shave with said gear. But yeah, super easy to assemble the Tatara Muramasa. And that's it. So that's the blade. Sorry, a little dirty from last shave. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the lather channels. I didn't really show that off. So they don't look that big, but it wasn't a problem the first time. We'll see how it goes. We're gonna start off on setting four. That's what worked for me really well last night. And uh, before we get any further, I gotta show you this special brush, man. I've been wanting uh, this brush for over a year, uh, this brand. Now this is the, the Varlay, guys. The, the great one and only Varlay. This is the cauldron shape. Uh, this is alpine grade hair. So this just uses uh, Varlay's highest grade hair. I got this on the secondary market. Uh, this isn't a custom from, at least a custom from what I made. I may or may not have one on the way. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the logo. It's got gold engraving. It's not white, actually. It's like a weird white color called like with a rose hue. Forgot the name. Cauldron 29 millimeter high density knot. So this is not a uh, extra density. This is a high density. He has two uh, offerings. The extra has even more gel. <laughs> not gel. Um, I'm sorry. More density, more hair. I'm just gonna wet it again, and we'll get into the load. Uh, I didn't even go over the soap. Sorry, this video might be longer. Oaken Labs V3 base. This is called Sanctum. Wonderful scent. Um, I recently picked up like pretty much the whole line, and I'm really enjoying their stuff. This is the tub. We're not even loaded. Pretty cool tub, but we're gonna load for like a minute while I talk, I guess. Yeah, why not load for a minute? Uh, why not? These are really jelly tips, so really super soft, cloud-like, um, not overly jelly, but just very nice. Um, yeah, more to come on the brush and the razor. I don't know, man. Two new high-end, like, very nice gear, like, dream gears of mine, I guess. Eh. But, um, yeah, might as well do it with a bank, you know. Take a small hiatus, might as well get back to it. Um, I think I just got, like, another 30 seconds, but, um... Yeah, so setting four, I like wrote this down. So setting four is gonna have a 0.8 millimeter gap and a 0.07 blade exposure. So, um, let's see, yeah, and as you guys know from that um, the quick overview that the it is slightly different um, specifications to the Tatara Nadachi and the Masamune. So um, I thought that was interesting, but yeah. Beautiful scent, nice, good load on there. Perfect. I'm just gonna fill up the water. Get some proto lather going. Really nice scent. Yeah, so we're probably eight minutes into the video. Um, the one that I edited in, so without further ado, we'll get into it. Just gonna dip the tips here and then get into the lather. Oh man, <laughs> I can't hold my excitement any longer. This brush is amazing, guys. <laughs> um, it's freaking awesome. So I was kind of worried that the, <laughs> I was worried that the backbone wouldn't be that good. And don't get me wrong, the backbone is not like crazy, uh, crazy good like the Black Eagle, or even most of my declarations, but something about this is just so satisfying to use. It's just easy to display, but it's not floppy at all. Um, and it just feels like a soft cloud on your face. There's just little to no scrub. And I was kind of worried that this handle would feel weird because, you know, the shape kind of looked weird on like in pictures, but in, in person, it's like very easy to hold, very comfortable. I might be lathering a while, so if you want to just see the shave, maybe fast forward a bit. <laughs> I'm 
gonna enjoy this one. Oh man, banging scent. It's just like a rose sandalwood scent. Um, rose is kind of more in the background, but it's always there. So it's just a beautiful scent. Rose and sandalwood just go so well together. Um, another scent that I love that has that is uh, Rose Santal by Chatillon Lux, but it's completely different. It's it's not even close to this. Uh, they're both great in their own ways. Um, yeah. I'll, if I have time, I'll go into the scent later, but this is an awesome, awesome brush. I kind of don't want to use anything else right now, except maybe a Black Eagle. <laughs> Yeah, this could take a decent amount of water, but I did load heavy. I'm just concerned because I, I did underload a little bit last night. Definitely not a problem today. Um, yeah, so yesterday um, I shaved at like 10 p.m. Right now it's 8 p.m. Following day, I don't have much growth on my face. This razor is really efficient, guys. Um, really impressed with it so far. Only used once so keep in mind i'm in the honeymoon phase whenever someone gets new gear you're just going to be more excited about it it's just how it is uh, some like to call it recency bias like uh when people see athletes they grow up watching but they haven't seen like jordan for example um they automatically assume one's better <laughs> just an example <laughs> for those that are into sports yeah, so I think we're almost dialed in. Not really. Let's see. But yeah, man, you get just a gentle, soft scrub. It's just an awesome brush. Um, the white might look boring to many, but if you guys have seen, seen the brushes I own, I'm really into the clean, classy designs. Just need more water here. There you go. Just going to paint in some more water. And if I need to add more water, I'll use it on the second pad. Honestly, I don't I don't think shaving. I don't mind taking more time lathering today. I don't think shaving is gonna take that long. I just this razor is so efficient after last night, I just don't have much growth. <laughs> Which is crazy because my hair normally grows back like super quick. Yeah man, this is just the lather is literally perfect right now. All right, ready for the first pass. Like I said, we're on setting number four. Not sure if you guys could see that, but uh, that's what the blade looks like. And let's get into it. So um, I didn't want to mess around with the settings too much. I kind of want to get acclimated to the razor before I really mess around. What I might do, what I kind of did last night, or what I might do this shave is when I go against the green. That's when I kind of mess with the gap. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have no intention of getting rid of this razor. <laughs> so don't worry, I'll use other gaps in other videos. I just wanna, more gaps or so. I just wanna really get used to the razor. So the razor is, like I said, it's 105 grams, but it's perfectly balanced. And it's just buttery smooth. Even on uh, setting number four, it's just really impressive. It's just, I don't know what it is, man. I, call me crazy, but I'm telling you, I'm really not trying to drive hype here, but like somehow they made it smoother than the, uh, the Massimune and then the Dachi. I don't know if it's because the blade is clamped, so more parts of the blade are uh, clamped down or what, but it's apparently noticeable for me, in my opinion. I'll see how others kind of share their thoughts uh, as they get the razor. I think uh, it's only open to pre-orders right now, but if we catch up on production. Uh, an adjustable has a lot more parts and it takes more time to make, especially when you're hand finishing each part. So <clears throat> those of you that know the price, um, Maybe that helps tell you guys the story, especially the R&D. So for me, this is kind of appropriately priced, in my opinion. 
it's not overpriced. It's not severely underpriced, but yeah, like I said, we're not going to be uh, shaving very long. It's just so efficient, man. Like, let's uh, drop some water. Yeah, so this scent, I'll get into the scent because it's just too good. Um, only complaint is the scent strength is about like a, maybe like a four. It's just under average. The other scents offered by the artisan are about five or six. So this one's just a little bit under and it's like, it's like one of my favorites. So I kind of want a little bit more just because I like it so much. But for most people, I'm sure it'll be fine. <clears throat> yeah, so the scent notes are transparent, sorry, translucent, not transparent. Translucent jasmine, dry bergamot, rose, paper, sandalwood, benzoin, Virginia cedarwood, and patchouli. So for me, it's very woody. It's got slight undertones of that patchouli, but for me, it's just more sandalwood and then just that hint of beautiful rose, that succulent rose. It's not sweet at all. It's like not dry rose either. It's kind of like in between. It's just a beautiful scent. Yeah, this, this ladder is pretty much dialed in. Pass number two, we're gonna stick with the setting four. So yeah, um, the shaving experience, it's super smooth, man. It's just super efficient. I don't have much growth, just, just knocks it down. I don't know if you guys can hear that audio feedback. Sweet. Yeah, leather channels seem to be doing fine. I find though that most razors, sorry, I'm just getting wet. I find that most razors, honestly, they have pretty decent lather channels um, in terms of rinsability, except the mule, uh, someone remind me, didn't even have lather channels, the Raka, what a joke. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry if you love the, the Raka. A lot of people love it, but I'm sorry. That, that to me is a joke. I can't own that razor when it doesn't have lather channels. It couldn't rinse. <laughs> but most times, <laughs> when you appropriately hydrate the lather, not a problem rinsing. All right, we're gonna feel around here. So my face is, we're like 95% BVS. Not a ton of buffing needed. I really don't think the shave can get any better. This Oaken Labs V3 base is solid. I'll talk about it more in another video. Sense dope, brushes dope. Really digging the razor. I was worried, like I said, I was worried about the weight, but it's really not bad at all. And even with wet hands, like it's wet right now, it's still pretty grippy. So maybe we'll go against the grain on the face here. The blade just feels really solid in the razor. And I think that's the biggest thing here. But yeah, I'm actually gonna go to setting two. Because it feels a little bit more, less comfortable than I'd like <clears throat> on a, against the grain pass. So we're going to run it back here. <laughs> yeah, I already got most of the hair. Yep. Yeah, it's honestly, it's just now you, you can't even feel the blade, but you can hear it cutting. Yeah, you got to play with that angle just a little bit. There you go. Yeah, last night I got zero irritation and it was BBS and I was just, I could probably get away with shaving an extra day if I wanted. The only thing it couldn't really knock down in those two passes last night on setting four was the trouble spots. So the sides of my neck and like maybe a little bit here. Tough for most razors though. Feel around, so yeah. Sometimes I like to 
I think setting three might be the way to go. Let's try, I never even tried to take three yet. Oh yeah. Oops. Yeah, guys, three is awesome. So you get very little blade feel, but just enough to feel that the blade is there. Yeah. Residual is doing a damn good job. Don't even need leather, but... If I were to clean up on setting four, I definitely could. And it would have got me to BBS even sooner, because last night... I was on uh, setting two and then I went back to four and then my trouble spots were just like done. Nice. Yeah, so we're BBS. We're just gonna rinse off real quick and then get back into the post shave. All right, we're back for the post shave. Freaking awesome shave, guys. The post shave on this stuff is very very good um wow uh bbs no cuts no nicks irritation on about 18 hours of growth more masa more to come so far so good varlet for me lives up to the hype these tips are just cloud soft with some light scrub backbone is about <clears throat> just over medium not as dense and as good backbone as some of the uh popular declaration knots but to me this is just absolute joy to use for some reason i like prefer it less on this it just feels awesome plan on using it more for the splash oaken labs matching splashes is not alcoholic if you count the fact that witch hazel is not 15 percent alcohol <laughs> then it's uh not alcoholic technically um i'm just gonna put some splash in but yeah, it's got a ton of skin food, and my skin just feels dope after, like... So the immediate post shave from the Splash is, like, just okay. But after, like, four or five hours, my skin just feels supple, protected the whole day. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, and I found the scent land glingers, like, two, three hours. Yeah. But yeah, it's it for the shave, guys. Fantastic shave. I'll catch you guys soon. Peace.